Okay, now I think I'm recording. Okay, perfect. All right, so yeah, probability rules. Um, I think like two weeks ago, uh, Wednesday, uh, like two weeks ago, we we started this uh, section 5.2 uh, uh, with the probability rules. I tried to explain the multiplication and addition rules, but I'm gonna uh, just uh, I'm gonna just remind you everything, uh, guys. Uh, so yeah. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna start with the multiplication rule, and then uh, I will uh, I will talk about uh, the addition rule. So let's start with the multiplication rule. Um, so when I say multiplication rule, I mean, uh, so let's say you have two events, A and B. Uh, let say A and B uh, be two events, okay? So we have two events, A and B. And so the goal here, so what we're gonna try to do, so the goal here is to compute the probability of A and B, of A and uh, B. So that's the probability that the, event, the events A and B both occur, okay? Um, so we're gonna try to compute this probability, the probability of A and B, right? Um, now, uh, so this probability of A and B actually depends on the relationship between A and B. So the, the answer here uh, depends So it depends on the relation between between the two events, between A and B. Um, so actually it depends if uh, the events A and B are independent or dependent. Uh, so what do I mean by independent events? So two events are independent. Um, so this is, let's say a definition. So two events A and B are uh, independent if So if the occurrence or the non-occurrence of one event doesn't change the probability that the other event will occur. Okay, so if the occurrence or the non-occurrence of one event, does not uh, change uh, the, the probability that uh, the other event will occur, what will happen, that the other event will occur. Okay. So in other words, guys, the idea here is that the two events are independent if there's no, you know, if there's no relation between the two events. If the occurrence or non-occurrence of one event doesn't change the occurrence or non-occurrence of the other event, there is no connection between the two events. Okay. So for example, uh, here's an example of independent events. So if you roll a die, uh, so example of independent events. Um, let's say you're all a die, okay? And uh, let's say the event A 
a, this is the event, um, the event A, that's the event where you get like uh, six. of getting six, let's say on the first uh, die, All right? And the event B, this is, uh, let's say the, the event where you get let's say uh, four on a uh, second die, okay? So, I mean, these two events, when you roll a die, uh, um, you know, uh, for the first time, uh, let's say, so that the event A is the event where you get six, right, on the first die. And uh, when you roll uh, second, the second time the, the die, um, and, um, you know, there, there's no connection or there's no interference or there's no relationship between, uh, you know, um, uh, rolling the die first time and rolling the die second time, right? There's no connection between the two events, right? So the probability of getting six on the first die, right, is has no relation or connection with the probability that you get four on the second die, right? So then these two events are independent. So, yeah, so, um, so these two events, so the A and B are independent events. Right, because again, there's no, I mean, the occurrence, if you get six on the first die, or if you don't get six on the first die, uh, you know, has no uh, interference or connection or relationship with getting a four on the second die, right? There's no connection, there's no relationship, right? There is no, um, so the occurrence of, uh, of A doesn't change or doesn't interfere with the occurrence of the event uh, B, right? It doesn't change the probability. I mean, if you get six on the first die, it doesn't change the probability that you're gonna get four on the second die. Or if you uh, getting uh, six on the first die, it doesn't change the probability that you don't get four in the second die, right? There is no connection, right? There's no relationship. Does this make sense to you guys that these two events are independent? There's no connection between these two events, right? Um, now, of course, two events are dependent. They're gonna be independent if the outcome of one uh, changed uh, the other one, right? So, uh, so two two events So two events are are dependent Of course, if they are not independent, right? Uh, so if if they are not independent, if uh, the outcome of uh, of the first event of of one, the outcome of one changed uh, uh, the outcome of the other one, right? The other one. Right. Uh, so if they are not independent, then of course they are dependent, right? So these two events, so the, the, the two events are not, are not independent. So dependent. Okay, so there is, I mean, there is a relationship between, or there is a, uh, connection between the the probability of the, the 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 probability of the two events, right? So, for example, okay, let's say you're gonna draw two socks. 
uh, let's say you draw two socks. At random, of course. At random, from uh, you know, from a basket or from uh, a drawer. Okay, from a drawer, uh, without, uh, without, and this is like the keyword here, uh, without replacing. So uh, the keyword here is without replacing. The, uh, you know, the first one uh, before drawing the second one. Just without uh, replacing, this is the keyword, before drawing the, the second one. Um, so, for example, uh, let's say you have, uh, let's say we have uh, uh, three green, uh, two blue, and one red sock. And one red. Uh, socks, right? And um, you know, so let's say the event A is so A let's say in the event A you draw a green, for example, a green sock the first time. The first time, okay, and the event B, event B is that you draw again. Let's say a green, a green sock. Uh, the second time. Okay, um, so do you see any connection between these two events, uh, guys? Because again, uh, when you when you uh, draw the uh, sock the second time, you don't replace the first sock, right? The, this is without replacing, right? Um, as I said, this is without replacing, right? I mean, you see, do you see any connection between the two events, guys? I mean, you know, the current again, two events are. Uh, you know, are independent if the occurrence of or non-occurrence of one event doesn't change the probability that the other event will occur. Now, if the thing here, if the event A occurs, so if you draw a green sock the first time, right? So how many green socks are left if you draw a green sock the first time? But two left, right? Now, if you don't draw a green sock, uh, the first time. How many are left? How many green socks left? Sorry. Three, right? So, I mean, the number of socks, uh, green socks left, uh, like in the second time, depends on the occurrence or non-occurrence of the event A, right? So you see here the dependence between the two events, right? So the, the, the so um, yeah, so what I'm saying here is that, so the, uh, if, uh, so if the event A occurs, then there are like, remember event, event B, you're gonna draw a green sock, right? The second time. So if the event A occurs, well, there are only two so green socks left. There are three, three green socks, right? So if you draw a green sock, then there are uh, only two, two green socks left. Okay, but if the event A do not occur, uh, 
So we still have the, there are the green socks left. Okay, and the number of green socks left, of course, is gonna change uh, uh, the probability of the event B, right? The event B is to draw a green sock uh, a, a second time, right? So the event, the probability of the event B where you draw a green sock is gonna change de depending on the occurrence or non-occurrence of the event A, right? So, so yeah, so what I'm saying is, so the probability of the event A, event B, sorry. So the probability of the event B In the event B, you're gonna draw a green sock. So you need to count how many green socks you have, right? So the probability of the event B, uh, uh, and uh, again, the event, event B is uh, when you draw a green sock the second time, the second time. Okay, so the probability of this event B will depend. So it depends on the number of green socks left, of course. So it depends on how many green socks you have, right? So it depends on, on uh, the number of green socks. Right. Either you're left with two or three, right? So it depends on the number of green socks and dependence. Uh, so the number of green socks itself depends on the occurrence or non-occurrence of the event A, right? So the number of the green socks depends itself on, uh, so depends on the occurrence or non-occurrence of event A, non-occurrence of the event A. So, so as you can see, the, the, the probability of the event B depends on the occurrence or non-occurrence of the event A. So the A and B are uh, dependent, right? So then the conclusion, uh, the conclusion here is that the, the events A and B are dependent, are two dependent events. Does this make sense to you guys why A and, a and B are dependent here? Again, A, uh, the event A was to draw uh, a green sock in the first time, right? The event B, and remember, we, we don't replace the, the first uh, sock, right? Before drawing the second one. And so the event B is to draw again a green sock the second time. And um, yeah, so the number of uh, green socks left in the basket or in the drawer depends on you know, uh, if you draw uh, a green sock the first time or not, right? So then the probability of, event, of the event B, um, in some sense, depends on the occurrence or non-occurrence of the event A. Does this make sense to you guys? Any question? Do you see why here I, A and B are dependent, right? That's, that's different from, uh, you know, the example where you roll a die, right? Getting one, or uh, on the first die and or six on the first die and getting four on the second die, right? I mean, if you get six on the first die, I mean, it doesn't really uh, interfere with the, the fact that you're gonna get uh, four on the second die, right? Uh, I mean, there is no connection. There is no uh, uh, relation, right? Between the two events. But here, when you draw socks, uh, green socks or, or, um, or, red, or red or blue or whatever, uh, you know, so the number of green socks in the basket or in the drawer uh, is going to depend on if you draw a green sock the first time or not, right? So, yeah. Um, all right, so then how do we compute the, the probability of two events 
that are uh, independent. Um, so, so the formulas are the following. So, so if you have two independent events, A and B, So here A and B are independent. So if you have two independent events, then P uh, probability of A and B, uh, it's A uh, and of course, the so probability of A and uh, B, that will be equal to probability of A times the probability of B. So this is an application here. Okay. Um, so that's why this is called the multiplication rule because we multiply the two probabilities, right? So probability of, uh, um, uh, a and B, it's probability of A times probability of B when A and B are independent, okay? Now, for dependent events, so if A and B are dependent, this is more, uh, I guess, uh, a little bit tricky. Uh, so if, so A and B are uh, dependent, So then we have the following formula. So, uh, um, uh, well, before before dependent uh, events, let me just say, guys, that you can extend the first uh, this first formula to uh, more than two events. So let me just say here, uh, if you have like three events, three independent events, let me just say here. Uh, so, uh, so this formula can be extended. This can be uh, extended uh, to uh, more than two events. Okay, so for example, let's say you have A, B, and C, and C, R. So the three events are independent. Okay, so then uh, probability of A and B and uh, C. Okay, so it's gonna be uh, probability of A times, times probability of B times probability of C. Okay, so you can extend this formula uh, for independent events to more than two events, all right? So if you have like four, four independent events, then probability of A and B and C and D, that will be the, just the product of the probabilities of the, of the, the four events, et cetera, right? Um, now, so this is for the end. Yes, is there a question? Uh, okay, probably not. All right, so this is for independent events. Now, for dependent events. Uh, so before the formula, guys, let me just uh, explain uh, some notation here. Uh, so we need some notation. Um, So for dependent events, okay. so we have the following notation. Uh, when you write, for example, uh, P or probability of A, then bar B, this means uh, probability of A, given B 
given B. Or um, a probability of B uh, bar uh, A, that would be probability of B given A. Of B given A. Okay. Um, uh, so, yeah, so then the probability of A and B, um, so the formula is the following for probability of A and B. So the formula is uh, the following. So if you have uh, <clears throat> for dependent events, of course, so A and B are dependent. Um, so then probability of A and B, <clears throat> there'll be probability of A times the probability of B given A. Okay, A is given, then we are looking for the probability of B, or you can also switch A and interchange A and B. So you can interchange A and B. You can say, well, probability of A and B. Uh, this is also probability of B uh, times probability of A given B. Um, let me just say, guys, here, before the examples and uh, the exercises, let me just say, uh, that the, uh, in general, probability of B given A is different from probability of A given B. Okay, so just uh, one remark here uh, before the examples. So, uh, so in general, uh, probability of A uh, given B, this is different from probability of B given A. Okay. All right, so let's have some uh, examples. Uh, examples. Uh, so example number one, uh, example number one. Example number one. All right, uh, um, so um, let's say um, uh, you're gonna draw, um, we're gonna draw, let's say uh, two uh, defective, So first, um, so we're gonna draw two cameras. So we're gonna draw two cameras from, from a lot of uh, 100, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, 100 cameras uh, without, Replacing. Okay. And let's say um, we have there are 10 defective cameras uh, out of the 100. There are 10 defective. cameras out of the 100. Okay. So the question guys is, what's the probability to, 
So what's the probability of uh, drawing of drawing two uh, defective uh, cameras? Okay. So we have this 100 cameras, right? Uh, we're gonna draw two cameras. Um, there are, we know there are 10 defective uh, uh, cameras out of the 100, right? So we are looking for the probability to draw two defective cameras, right? So we're gonna draw a defective camera the first time, and then you're gonna draw a defective camera the second time, right? So we have like two events, A, you draw a defective camera first time. So A, oops, I'm sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Um, yeah, so you're gonna draw two cameras, right? So as I said, so the uh, here, um, so we are looking for the probability of drawing two defective cameras. So you need to draw a defective camera the first time, and then you need to draw again, a defective uh, camera the second time, right? So we have two events, right? So we have event A. So let's say event A, that's where, that's when you draw a defective uh, camera the first time, okay? And event B, that's when you draw a defective camera a second time. The second, the second time, right? Are there any questions in the chat? Okay, no questions. All right, so we are looking for the probability of drawing two defective cameras. So drawing two defective cameras means you're gonna draw a defective camera the first time and you're gonna draw a defective camera the second time, right? So we are looking for the probability of uh, A and B. A and B. Okay, A and B. Again, A and B means you're gonna draw, so this is a probability of drawing a defective camera the first time, defective camera uh, the first time, And, right, and a defective camera the second time. Camera second time. All right, so if you draw defective camera the first time, and then again, defective camera the second time, then you draw actually two defective cameras, right? And that's exactly the, the probability that we are looking for. Right, we are looking for the probability of drawing two defective cameras. Okay, defective camera first time and the defective camera the second time. So this is why here we need the probability of A and B. Does this make sense to you guys? You see why this is probability of A and B, right? Defective camera first time and the defective camera second time. Okay, that will be exactly two defective cameras, right? Now the question of course is, I wanna compute this probability of A and B, drawing a defective camera first time and drawing a defective camera the second time. Now the question of course, are A and B, uh, are they independent or uh, are they dependent? So what do you think guys? Are the two events dependent or independent? So, 
So, uh, Shaquana, yes, Shaquana, absolutely, they are dependent. Uh, thank you. So the reason is, uh, you know, if you draw a defective camera the first time, right? Uh, that is gonna change the number of the, the remaining defective cameras, right? So if you draw a defective camera the first time, uh, you're gonna have uh, you know only nine defective cameras the second time, right? But if you don't draw a defective camera the first time, then uh, you're left with uh, you're still left with ten defective cameras, right? So the occurrence or known occur occurrence of A right, it's gonna change the, uh, the probability or the occurrence of the, the event B, okay? Because it, the, the occurrence of A changed the number of defective cameras in the lot, right? Uh, it's really important here, guys, to understand this, this notion of dependence uh, events, right? So you see this connection between A and B, because uh, the occurrence of A changed the number of defective cameras. Uh, so that would change the probability of B, right? So, um, so the occurrence or non-occurrence of A change of A. So change the number of defective cameras. Okay. And if you change the number of defective cameras, then you're gonna change the probability of B because the B, that's the event where you, when you draw a defective camera, right? Uh, in the, the second time. And the probability of drawing a defective camera the second time depends on how many defective cameras you have, right? So, yeah, so there is this relation between the, the, the two events, uh, the A and B. So, yeah, as Shaquana said, so the two events are uh, dependent. So, change the number of defective cameras. So, that would change the probability of B. And again, B, that's uh, when you draw a defective camera from the lot, right? So the probability of B. So then A and B are uh, dependent. Okay. Um, Okay, um, well, I hope this makes sense to you guys. Now, um, yeah, so I, uh, I, I need to compute this probability of A and B. Now, I, I know that A and B are dependent, right? So if A and B are dependent, then we need to use uh, this formula right here. Okay, or this one. So let's say you wanna use the first one. Uh, so we are saying, so probability of A and B, this is equal to for, so this is because A and B are dependent, right? They are dependent. So, um, so we are saying, so the formula is the following uh, because A and B are dependent. So then probability of A and B, uh, this is equal to the probability of A times uh, probability of B, given A, uh, given A, given the occurrence of A, okay, if A happens. Now, um, so first we need to, so step one, we need to compute the probability of A, right? And in the second step, we need to compute the probability of B given A, right? And then as a third step, we can compute the probability of A and B. So as a step one, so what will be the probability of A? So step one, uh, let's say, uh, so this is probability of A. And remember guys, A, the event A, this is when you draw uh, 
a defective camera the first time. Defective camera the first time. Okay. So remember probably the, the formula for the probability. It's it's the frequency of the occurrence of the event occurrence, right? The frequency of the event occurrence over the size of the sample. Right. So when I say frequency, of course, I mean how many times does the event A occur? Um, so how many? So what's the event A? Is that's the, the event A? That's when you draw a defective camera, right? So how many uh, defective cameras uh, are there? Yeah. Ten, right? So we have ten. Um, this is, so the frequency of the event would be 10 over the size, the total size of the sample. This is like the total number of cameras, right? The size of the sample, the lot we have uh, 100, right? We have, uh, uh, where is it? Here. Uh, so as you can see, we have 100 cameras, right? And there are uh, 10 defective cameras out of 100. So the total size of the sample uh, the total number of cameras, that would be 100. So this is over 100. So this is, so this is the total number of cameras. Okay. Um, yeah, so is, is there any question guys about this with 10 over 100? There are 10 defective cameras out of 100. So the probability to draw a defective camera the first time is just 10 out of 100. So that would be 0.1, 0 0.1. 0 uh, again, as a percentage, if you wanna express this as a percentage, then you need two decimals, right? So this is like 0 0.10. And so this is 10%, right? So you need two digits, right? You need two digits after, uh, after the dot, guys, um, to get your percentage. Uh, all right, so that's for the first step. Now for the second step, guys, we need to compute. So we got our probability of A, that's the 0 0.1, uh, that's the 10%. Now we need to compute the probability of B given A. Okay, so let me explain this. Um, so step number two, uh, so again, B is to draw a defective camera the second time, defective camera uh, the second time. was, um, sorry, I'm gonna just uh, mute. Yeah, uh, A was to, uh, the event A was uh, to draw a defective camera the first time. Defective camera uh, the first time. And remember guys, um, the keyword. Uh, we don't replace the first camera, right? The uh, oops. So the keyword again. So we don't actually without replacing, right? So we don't replace the first camera. Right, so we are looking for uh, the probability of B given A. So when I say given A means the occurrence of A. So this is like, this is probability that you draw a def the defective camera the se second time. And you know that you draw a defective camera uh, in the first time. So this is, so given A, so here given A means so we draw, we know that uh, 
a, a defective camera the first time. A defective camera. Camera the first time. Okay, so what would be the probability uh, to draw a defective uh, camera the second time? So first, how many defective cameras left given A, given the fact that you draw a defective camera the first time? There are, how many left? How many defective cameras left if you draw a defective camera the first time? Nine. Nine, right? So that will be, so this probability here, uh, B given A, this is nine because there are nine defective uh, cameras left. That's because in uh, because of the occurrence of A, because we know that we draw the defective camera the first time. Uh, over, and how, what, will, what will be now the total size of the sample? 99. 99, absolutely, because, I mean, we draw a camera the first time, so then there are 99 cameras left, right? So that's, that would be the probability of, uh, uh, probability of B given A. So given A, again, guys, given A means that you know that uh, A happened or A occurred, okay? Given the occurrence of A, so in this case, you know that the first time you, you draw a defective camera, right? So then uh, you're gonna have only nine defective cameras left. And of course, if you draw one camera, there are 99 left because it's, we don't replace the, the first camera, right? So there are uh, only 99 cameras left. So yeah, that'll be nine over 99. Uh, and that will be equal to, uh, uh, let me see, this is 0. Uh, 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 let me see, yeah, uh, zero, zero 09, right? Or something. I mean, it's uh, uh, zero point, uh, zero 0.09. Okay, so that would be uh, nine. Nine percent. Okay. Now, so now we can compute the probability of A and B. So this is the last step. Step three. So probability of A and B. Again, A and B means that you draw a defective camera the first time and a defective camera uh, the second time. So it means you're gonna draw two defective cameras, right? So this is, this event A and B means you're gonna draw two defective, uh, two defective, two defective cameras. Okay, so as I said, this is supposed to be probability of A, our formula for dependent events, times probability of B given A. So that will be A, probability of A, we said it's 10% or 0. Uh, this is 10% uh, times, and this is 9%. All right, so this is like, uh, I mean, if you, uh, if you use uh, decimals, this is like 0 0.1 times, so this is multiplication, of course, multiplication, uh, times 0 0.09. And so they'll be equal to 0 0.009. So in percentage, uh, they'll be equal to 0.9%, right? Because if you take uh, two digits, 
after the decimal, that will be just zero, and that will be 0 0.9%. Any uh, question, guys? I mean, I, here, of course, I, because I, I gave you all the details, but um, uh, yeah, but that's how we compute, uh, you know, the probability of two dependent events. Um, all right, so let me do one more example. So this is for and dependent events. Uh, I mean, in general, of course, computing the, the probability of uh, dependent events, it's more tricky than uh, for independent events. So that's why I'm gonna try to focus today on computing uh, you know, probability of uh, dependent de events. Uh, we're gonna do a lot of examples and exercises, but uh, let me do at least one example with independent uh, events, okay? Um, so there'll be example or exercise or example number two, I guess. All right, so uh, let's say uh, so in this example number two, we have um, uh, so we have two people. We have Andrew. So so A Andrew is uh, let's say fifty five. He's uh, fifty five years old, and and the probability that that he will be alive after, let's say, 10 years is zero point is 72%. Okay. Um, now, uh, so this is for Andrew. Now for, let's say, uh, Christina. Uh, I'd say Christina, she's uh, younger than Andrew. She's uh, just uh, 35 years old. Okay, so the probability that she'll be alive like after 10 years is, uh, I guess, uh, it's more, um, it's larger than the probability that uh, Andrew will be alive after 10 years. So, and the probability that Uh, that she she will be alive alive after ten years is let's say ninety two percent. Okay, so um, well, of course, here um, you know we assume that the lifespan of one has no effect on the other one. Okay, so. Um, uh, these two events, um, being alive after 10 years um, uh, for Andrew or Christina are just uh, two independent events, okay? So we suppose, so here uh, we suppose so the lifespan of one has no effect on the other one. Okay. So yeah, so what's the probability that so what's the probability that both uh, Andrew and Christina would be uh, I mean both alive in 10 years. So what's the probability that So Andrew and uh, Christina uh, both, so we'll both be alive uh, after 10 years. All right, um, 
So, all right, so let's uh, read the, the problem again, guys. So we are saying, so he's, there's Andrew, uh, he's uh, uh, 55 years old, the probability he will be alive after 10 years is 72%. Uh, there's Christina, 35 years old, and the probability that she'll be alive after 10 years, is, it's actually a 92%. Anyway, so we are looking for the probability that both, uh, so Andrew and Christina, uh, Andrew and, as you can see here, and Christina will both uh, be alive after uh, 10 years. So let's say, so we have like, so we have Andrew and Christina, right? So, so uh, we have like two events. So the event A would be, uh, you know, would be, um, so event A, so this is for Andrew. So Andrew, this is Andrew. Uh, so Andrew would be alive in 10 years or after 10 years. That's the, your event A. Andrew will be alive after 10 years. Event B, right? Uh, Christina will be alive after 10 years. Okay. Um, so then, of course. Uh, probability of A and B. A and B means A and B means that Andrew and Christina will both be alive after ten years, right? A and B, and these two events, A and B. I mean, as you can see from the from, from the question here, uh, we say well, the the lifespan of one has no effect on the other. Okay, so it means that the the two events, uh, Andrew being alive after ten years, is actually independent, right? from uh, the event where uh, Christina is, uh, you know, is alive uh, after uh, 10 years, right? So the two events, A and B here, are independent, okay? There's no relation, there's no connection between the two events. So the event A and the event B here are independent. So A and B are independent. There is no connection between the two events. Right now, so how do we compute the probability of A and B? A and B. So because the two events are independent, right? So for independent events, probability of A and B, uh, where is it? Um, all uh, right, here, okay, so as you can see, for independent events, probability of A and B is just probability of A times probability of B, okay? So this is just a probability of A times probability of B. Uh, so what's probability of A? Actually, it's given A again, that's uh, the event A is, when Andrew will be alive after 10 years. So you know that, as you can see, uh, the probability that Andrew would be alive after 10 years, we know it's 72%. That's the probability that uh, Andrew will be alive after uh, 10 years. Christina should be alive after 10 years. The probability of Christina is, uh, would be alive after 10 years is uh, 92%. Okay, so. Probability of A is 72%. So that's when Andrew will be alive after 10 years and probability times probability of B, that's when Christina will be alive after uh, 10 years, that's 92%. Right, so 72% guys, this is like 0 0.72 times 92%, that's 0.92. Remember guys, the percent means division by 100, right? This percent symbol, this is division by 100, right? For example, when I say 72%, this is like 72 over 100, right? And 72 over 100, if you use your calculator, it's just 0 0.72, 
right? That's how I got this 0 0.72, right? The, the percent, again, this percent uh, symbol means division by 100. So it's like 72 divided by 100, and that will be 0 0.72. All right, so this is division by 100. And so this is just 0 uh, uh, 0.72 times 0 0.92. Uh, if you use your calculator, that would be 0 uh, 0.66, I think, if I'm not mistaken. All right, so this is 66%. Uh, okay, so the probability that both uh, Christina and Andrew will be alive uh, after 10 years is actually 66%. Uh, um, is there any question guys before the next example? And then I'm gonna give you a couple of exercises. I'm gonna do a lot of exercises actually uh, because um, yeah, because this is a, something which is really important. Uh, so you need to understand how uh, to compute all these probabilities. Um, well, is there any question about this first? Okay, so this is probability for independent events. Um, before the exercises, um, um, yeah, well, before the exercises, I think I can, um, because in, in the last time I, I talk about the additional rule, uh, probability of A or B. I mean, the, the um, I, I guess I can talk about the, the, the addition rule and then we can do a lot of, uh, a lot of exercises. Um, yeah, so let, let me talk about the addition rule and then we're gonna do a couple of uh, exercises. Um, yeah, so this is for the multiplication rule because here we multiplied, right? the P of A, the probability of A times, uh, I mean, as you can see, probability of A times probability of B. So this is why it's called the multiplication rule. We multiply the two probabil probabilities, right? Uh, so this is when you have A and B. Now, when you have A or B, uh, so that will be the addition rule. Uh, so number two, um, so number two, the addition rule. Okay. Um, so, well, the good news guys about the addition rule is that you don't really care if the, the events A and B are uh, dependent or independent, okay? Uh, so the addition rule is, uh, so we have two events, A and B. All right. Uh, so um, uh, probability of A or B okay so here guys this is different from uh, A and B so when is when you say A and B it means the occurrence of A and the occurrence of B so both events A and B they have to occur right when you say A and B uh, so when you say A and B, both events, they have to occur, right? When, I, when you say A or B, so A or B means, uh, uh, so A, so A or B means that either, so the event A occur, or or the event b of course or the event b occurs okay or it could be both a and b occur or a 
A and B both occur. Okay. So, uh, so I mean, I hope you can see the difference, right, between A and B. So we need the occurrence of both events, A and B. When you say A or B, uh, so either A occurs or B occurs or actually both A and B occur, okay? Uh, now, what's the formula for A or B? Uh, so this is actually equal to uh, probability of A plus, So this is why it's called the addition rule. So when you have or, A or B, there will be a plus, okay? So when we had A and B, right? A and B, we had times. Probability of A times, we need to multiply, right? Uh, with and. With or, we, we add. So probability of A or B, that's probability of A plus probability of B. But the thing here, guys, uh, when you compute probability of A, uh, you know, this is A, for example. Uh, so let's say the inside of the circle here, that would be probability of A, all right? Now, uh, plus the probability of B. Now, uh, let's say this is right here, this is B. And so if you add probability of B, uh, the inside of this uh, circle here, um, so as you can see in this region, this region right here, uh, the intersection of A and B, this region is actually counted uh, twice, right? It's, it's, it's blue and green at the same time, right? So when you, so it's this region here, this, this region, uh, the intersection between A and B, it's actually counted twice because it's in the probability of A and it's also in the probability of B. So when you say P of A plus P probability of B, then, uh, you know, uh, then this region is counted twice. And this is the intersection of A and B, this is A and B. So this is actually, uh, this region is A and B because it belongs to A and it belongs also to B, right? This red region, right, this one here. It's an intersection between A and B. And it's counted twice because it's in, the, it's, it's in A and it's also in B. So it's counted twice, right? So we need to subtract uh, from uh, probability of A plus probability of B, we need to subtract one time this uh, intersection region, which is probability of A and B. So here we need to subtract one time because it's counted twice we need to subtract one time this intersection region, which is probability of A and probability of A and B. Okay, so this is, uh, so this is your probability of A or B. Uh, this formula right here. Okay. So probability of A or B uh, is actually equal to the probability of A plus probability of B uh, minus the probability of A and B, right? And actually uh, for probability of A and B, of course, you need to check if A and B are dependent or independent, okay? So, um, well, let's do an example. Um, example. Example. Uh, uh, so for example, let's say we have this, uh, so let's say in this class, let's say we have uh, 31 students. in uh, st statistics uh, course. Okay. And uh, uh, so we have a uh, uh, freshman. Uh, 
so we have sulf sulfomers, uh, junior, and we have uh, senior students. Okay, okay, and then we have, of course, uh, males here and female. Um, so, for example, um, so let's say we have six uh, here, six uh, uh, males uh, students who, uh, who are freshmen. Uh, we have five male students who are uh, sophomore, and we have two male uh, students who are junior and one male student who are, who's a senior. Uh, and for female, so we have uh, nine, say nine uh, freshmen and three sophomores, uh, four juniors and just one female uh, senior. Okay, uh, in total we have like 31, right? Six plus five, uh, 11 plus three, that's uh, 13. Uh, plus nine, that's 22, 25, uh, is that 31? So I said 11 uh, plus two, 13, 14, 23, 26, 30, yeah, and 31, okay? So we're gonna select uh, a student uh, at random. Okay, so let's say we select a random student. Um, let's say you want to find find the probability that uh, uh, probability of uh, let's say uh, selecting a freshman. or uh, sophomore. Okay. Um, yeah. So as you can see in this example, um, so we need to find the probability of selecting a freshman or sophomore. Uh, so, uh, so we have like two events. So being a freshman, that will be the event A, right? This is like A and sophomore, that will be the event B, right? And we are looking for the probability of the event A or B, okay? so. So let me just write down here. Uh, so A, uh, so this is the event where you select, we select a freshman. Okay, and B, this is an event where you select Sophomore. Uh, sophomore. Okay. And so, as you can see, guys, we are looking for the probability of selecting a freshman or a sophomore. So that would be A, a freshman, or a sophomore, A, a or B, right? A or B. So we are looking for the probability of A or B. So probability of A or B. So A is uh, selecting a freshman, 
uh, B is selecting uh, a sophomore, right? So, uh, so what does our formula say uh, for or? Uh, so that will be probability of, we said it's probability of uh, probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A and B. All right, so probability of A. So let me just write down again the formula here. So that's probability of A uh, plus probability of B minus probability of A and B. All right. Now, so that'll be equal to, um, first, what's the probability of A? What's the probability of selecting a freshman? So A, right? Uh, that's the probability of selecting a freshman, right? So again, probability, how we, how we find the probability, of course, that will be a frequency of the event over the size of the sample. Frequency of the event is how many we are looking, we are interested in uh, selecting a freshman, right? So how many freshmen are there? Any guess 15. guys? 15, right? 15. Because 15, because we have 16, uh, 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 sorry, we have six, uh, uh, six male uh, freshmen, right? And nine female uh, freshmen, right? So in total, we have 15 freshmen. Okay, six male and the nine female, right? So that'll be 15. 15, that's the frequency of our event. Uh, that's the number of uh, freshmen in the class. So yes, so that'll be 15 over the size, of course, of the sample, the size of the sample, we are interested in selecting a student. So how many uh, students Th are there? 30, 30, 31. 31, absolutely, thank you. 31. So that's over 31. All right. So that's probability of A of uh, selecting a freshman. Now, plus uh, probability of B. B is uh, selecting a sophomore. So again, the question is a frequency, frequency of the size of the sample, frequency, how many? We are interested in the sophomore. So how many sophomores are there? A. Eight in total, right? Five male and three female. So eight in total over, again, the size of the sample is 31 minus, and now the question is, what's the probability of A and B? A is being a freshman, B is being a sophomore. Um, so what will be the probability of A and B, being a freshman and a sophomore, right? This is A and B. This is a freshman and, uh, you know, sophomore. So how many students are freshmen and sophomore? Sorry, I forgot my, sorry. 23 yeah. of 31. Uh, nope. So four, four. 23. So, um, so again, it's how many students are uh, a freshman and so for more. You said 23? Yeah, yeah. we both said 23. 23. <laughs> nope. Uh, why did you say 23? Let me just under understand your answer. Why did you say 23? That's like uh, the sum of, of what? Uh, the, like the total number? Of yeah, because you say A and B. Uh, so when, a and B, uh, yeah, so that's the, 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 the size of the sample, right? But how, how many students, uh, how many students are at the same time, freshmen and sophomore? That's the, frequ the frequency of the event, right? The frequency of the event is how many students are freshmen and uh, at the same time, sophomore. Actually, no student can be both, right? Uh, I mean, the student is either a freshman or sophomore. Oh. So the frequency of the event is zero. There, there's no student who is, you know, a uh, freshman and sophomore at the same time. I, I mean, you're right. You're, you're saying the total number of freshmen and sophomores, yeah, that's like the size of the sample. But, uh, but, but the thing is here, the frequency of the event is zero. 
because no student can be both freshman and sophomore. Um, so, uh, yeah, so here the frequency of A and B. So this is like the number of students who are uh, both uh, freshmen and sophomore. Both, right? Not just freshmen or, right? That's that's the thing. This is and, right? A and B. So it's uh, the student is both freshmen and so for more, uh, uh, and uh, so for more, uh, that would be zero. Okay, because again, no student can be both. Okay, so actually probability of this A and B, the probability of the student, a student, a selected student. So you select a student and you're looking for probability that the, the selected student is freshman and so for more, but no student can be both, right? So the, the event here, the probability of this event is just zero. Okay, so then, yeah, so then the answer, so the answer here would be, uh, so this is 15, 31 plus eight, 31, that will be 23, 31. And if you divide 23 over 31, of course, that will be uh, 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 0 0.74. And that will be 70, that will be 74%. Okay. Um, okay. One more. One more. Uh, one more question, guys. Uh, so here, as you can see, there. I mean, no student can be both. Uh, you know, uh, freshman and so for more. Now let's uh, take a different, um, uh, different question, uh, different example. Let's say you are uh, you are trying to find. So what's the probability of selecting? What's the probability of uh, selecting uh, uh, a male or female, let's say, uh, female or male, uh, let's say male, uh, a male and uh, or, or uh, a sophomore. Okay. So, so here we have two events, right? I'm gonna select student uh, who is a male or uh, a sophomore, right? So we have like two events. So A would be the event where you select A male student, and uh, B. This is the event where you select so for more. Okay. Um, so uh, we are looking for the probability of A or B, right, of selecting a male or sophomore. So we are looking for probability of A or B. So as I said, uh, for the the for the addition rule, so if you have A or B, that will be probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A and B. 
All right, so let's do first the, the A. Uh, what's the probability of A? Uh, what's the probability of uh, selecting uh, a male, right? So this is uh, uh, A. So how many, so frequency, uh, frequency of the event. So the question is how many uh, male students we have? Uh, let's see. So how many male students in total we have? A any guess, guys? So how many male students in total? So as you can see in the first, uh, the, the first row, so we have six uh, male freshmen plus uh, five male sophomore plus two male junior and one male senior, right? So in total, we have six plus five plus two plus one. Uh, we have, so 11 plus three, uh, that will be 14, right? Um, you know, we have 14 male students, right? So this is like the first, the total in the first, uh, the first uh, row, right? Because we have six freshmen male, uh, five sophomore male, plus two junior male and one senior male, right? So in total, we have uh, 14 male uh, students. Okay, so six plus five plus two plus one, that's 14. So we have 14 male students. So this is 14 over, of course, the size of the sample. In total, we have 31 students, right? This is, we have, because we have 14 male students in total, right? Plus, uh, probability of B. B, this is when you select a sophomore. So the question is, how many uh, sophomore students? Well, there are five male sophomore and three female uh, sophomore, right? So in total, as you can see, we have uh, eight, right? We have eight sophomore uh, students. So, uh, so in total here, so we have eight sophomore over the total number of students again is 31 minus, okay, now uh, this is, again, this is an eight, this is the number that we have eight uh, sophomore students. All right, A and B now. So what's the frequency of A and B? A it's being a male and B it's being a sophomore. So how many students are sophomore and male at the same time? Male and sophomore at the same time. Any guess guys? So the number of students are sophomore and male at the same time. It's five, right? So as you can see here, this uh, number five means this number five right here uh, means we have five males, uh, uh, sophomore, uh, male sophomore students, right? Um, so we have five male sophomore uh, students. Uh, so, so that's the number of students who are male and sophomore at the same time. All right, male and sophomore at the same time. We, we do have five students, male and sophomore. So that's five. So that'll be minus five over the 31. Again, 31, that's the total number of students because we are, uh, we are selecting a student uh, at random. And so the total size of the students or numbers, total number of students is just, uh, again, it's uh, 31. So this is, male and sophomore 
at the same time. All right, guys, so this is equal to uh, 14. Uh, so we come in denominator. This is fractions, guys, just to remind you how to add and subtract fractions. Uh, when you have fractions, of course, and you wanna add or subtract fractions, uh, you need the common denominator. Well, as you can see here, the common denominator is 31. So we have already the common denominator. So all you have to do, guys, is to subtract or to add the, the numerators, the, the top, okay? You don't really care about the denominator. The denominator is the same. It's your common denominator. So here it's your common denominator, which is 31. Now in the top, we have 14 plus eight, that will be 22 minus five, that will be uh, of course 17. So 14 plus eight minus five. So probability of A or B. Uh, as I said, 14 plus eight, 22 minus five, that's 17. 17 over 31, and that will be equal to 0 0.548, I think. So that's 54.8%. Um, any question, guys? Okay, so let's do a lot of the exercises now. Um, let's start with the first uh, uh, exercise. So we're gonna try to practice. So mainly, so what we have here, I mean, in this section, we have mainly like two rules, right? There is this, uh, uh, the multiplication rule. So this is for probability of A and B, probability of A and B. And as I said, so in general, for probability of A and B. So what we do, we have to check if the two events are dependent or independent, right? So if they are independent, a probability of A and B, that will be just P of A times P of B. But if it's uh, if the two events are dependent, then that will be uh, probability of A times probability of uh, B given A, right? And then we have this formula for probability of A or B, okay? Um, so, yeah, let's uh, first practice, uh, I guess, the, um, well, let's uh, practice first the, the addition rule and then I'm gonna practice a bit the multiplication rule, okay? So here's the first exercise. Uh, I'm gonna try to do a lot of exercises uh, because as I said, this is sometimes not, uh, is not easy. Sometimes it's kind of tricky. Uh, so we need to practice a little bit, right? So exercise, exercise one. All right. Uh, so we have the following um, uh, table. So this is the loyalty to supermarket based on location of the customer. Uh, so the loyalty uh, to a supermarket. based on uh, the location uh, location of the customer all right so we have the following table so in this table, table we have like, let's see how many columns, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and even eight. So uh, yeah, let's try. Um, so uh, here we have the location. Here, this is, uh, less loyalty of the customer is less than one year. Then we have between one and two years. Uh, 
three and between three and four. Uh, between uh, five and nine, between five and nine years. Then we have between 10 and uh, 14 years. And then we have more than 15 years. Okay, uh, so um, first location is the east, so the east of uh, the east of the Bronx, uh, for example. So the number of uh, customers from the east, uh, they are loyal less than one year. Uh, so we have actually uh, 32. So we have 32 customers that are from the East and they have been loyal to the supermarket for less than one year, okay? So that's what I mean by this 32, right? We have 32 customers uh, from the East and they have been loyal to the supermarket for less than one year. Uh, the number of customers uh, from the East and they have been loyal to this supermarket for uh, like between one and two years. Uh, we have 54 customers. We have 59 customers uh, from the East and they have been loyal to this supermarket for between three and four years. Between five and nine, we have 112 customers from the East. They have been loyal to the supermarket between four and 10 and 14, uh, five and nine years, between 10 and 14 years, we have 77. And a number of customers from the East and they have been loyal to this supermarket for uh, more than 15 years, uh, we have 180, okay? Uh, I mean, do these numbers make sense to you guys? Do you understand the, the, the table, how this table works? So again, like, again, so 32, so this 32 here, this number 30, 32, that's the number of uh, customers that are from the East. They are from the East, right? They are from the East and they have been loyal to the supermarket, uh, uh, you know, for less than one year, okay, et cetera. So this 54, this is the number of customers uh, from the East and they have been loyal to the supermarket, uh, you know, uh, for uh, between like one and two years, uh, et cetera. Um, all right, so uh, for the Midwest. Then we have the South and then we have uh, the West. So here we have 31, here we have 53, we have 41 here. Uh, this is 68, here it's 92, 56. This is 59, 68 again, 93, 67. 112, 120, 158, and 78. 77, 63, 106, uh, 44, uh, 45, uh, 118, 173, 158, and 86. Um, actually, the total number of customers is uh, 2008. So let me just say here, so the total number of customers or the size of the sample total number of uh, customers here is 2008. Okay. So again, what I mean by this 2008, 
that's like, again, total number of customers. So this is like the 32 plus the 54 plus the 59 plus 112 plus 77 plus 118 plus 31 plus 68, et cetera, right? So the sum of all these numbers is 2008, okay? All right, so that's questions. Uh, so we need to find the probability of course So find the probability that a customer, of course, this customer is selected at random, a customer chosen at random, so one, so the customer, the probability that this uh, customer chosen at random has been loyal 10 to 14 years. Two. Uh, has been loyal 10 to 14 years, given that he or she uh, is from the East. So uh, has been uh, loyal 10 to 14 years, given that uh, the customer uh, it's from the east. Okay. Uh, three. So has been loyal at least uh, ten years. Uh, for um, has been loyal uh, at least uh, 10 years, given that uh, the customer is from the West. Um, uh, five so has been um, where um, yeah, well, uh, the probability that this customer is actually from the West, given that so is. Uh, from the West, given that uh, he or she is from, uh, she's been, uh, or he has been loyal, she or he has been loyal less than one year. And the uh, last, number six, has been loyal for less than one year and is from the West. So has been loyal, has been loyal for less than one year, less than one year and is from the West. Right, guys. So yeah, I, I'm gonna give you some time to think about this exercise. Um, so uh, this is actually from the the, the textbook. 
right? So we have uh, like 20 minutes left. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure if we're gonna have to, uh, yeah, I guess I'm gonna have time to cover, uh, to go over this exercise, but next time we're gonna do more exercises, uh, of course, okay, uh, for sure. We're gonna do more exercises on Wednesday, uh, practice a little bit the, the addition rule. So, and, uh, and also the multiplication rule. Um, So this is this exercise. I think it's from the textbook. Um, yeah, it's from the textbook. Um, yeah. So like for number two, guys, uh, you're looking for the probability that the customer has been loyal to, uh, 10 to 14 years, given that he's from uh, the East. Uh, it means that you know that the customer is from the East. Okay, so we are just interested in customers from the East. Okay, so the, I mean the sample, your sample, it's not all the customers, your sample is just the customers from the East, okay? So I'm gonna give you five minutes to think about this. Um, Professor, I, uh, yes. I need help with five and six. How are they different? The five and six uh, is from the West, given that uh, he's or he or she's loyal for uh, 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 loyal uh, for less than one year. So you know that the customer uh, he or she is loyal for less than one year. That's the, yours. That's your sample. Yeah, but and how is it different from number six? He, no, number six. It's uh, uh, the customer has been loyal for less than one year and uh, he's from the West. Um, so, um, so in number six, you're looking for customers that are loyal for less than one year and they're from the West, right? So this, but the, this, the, 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 the sample here oh, oh. will be all the customers. So here uh, in six, the, the sample, that will be all the customers. Okay. 
And here, the sample is, uh, we are, you are interested in customers loyal, given that is loyal less than one year. So customers that have been loyal less than, less than one year, that's, that's your sample. Not just, not all the customers, but all, only the customers that have been loyal for less than one year. That would be your sample. Okay, got it, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, guys, this is um, this is just a, a line here. It's not one, right? This is just a line. Uh, this is supposed to be a line, okay.
<clears throat> All right, guys, uh, does anyone need more time? I mean, we have like 10 minutes, probably that'll be just enough to uh, go over this exercise. I mean, hopefully, I don't wanna make this table again. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's a big, <laughs> it's a big one. Uh, okay, so probably you are done. Uh, but as I said, so we're gonna we're gonna have more exercises on Wednesday. So don't worry uh, if you have trouble uh, with this. Uh, it's normal. I mean, um, um, yeah. So. Yeah, let me, in the last 10 minutes, uh, I'm gonna try to uh, solve this. And uh, yeah, and then uh, we're gonna continue this next uh, next time. This uh, section, I mean, next time. All right, so um, let's start with number one. So number one, uh, the probability that a customer cho chosen at random has been loyal 10 to 14 years. Okay, 10 to 14 years. So the event A here is that the, the customer has been loyal 10 to 14 years. That's the event. Uh, so what's the frequency of the event? So how many customers ha have been loyal uh, to the to this uh, supermarket 10 to 14 years, right? So we need to count how many, um, so let me just, so the event A here, The customer has been loyal, right, uh, to the su supermarket 10 to 14, for 10 to 14 years, right? So the probability of A, so that will be the frequency of A. So we need to count how many customers have been loyal uh, to this. Uh, supermarket uh, from 10 to 14 years, right? So uh, as you can see guys, so from the East, we have 77 customers from the East. They have been loyal 10 to four, from 10 to 14 years. We have uh, 63 customers from the Midwest. They have been loyal from 10 to 14 years, One, 106 from the South and 45 uh, you know, from the West. So in total, we have 77 plus 63 plus 106 plus 45, uh, right? Customers that have been loyal uh, for uh, from 10 to 14 years. So there'll be 291, right? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, yes, I think it's 291. So in total, we have 291 uh, customers. They have been loyal to the supermarket from 10 to 14 years. Does this make sense to you guys why you have 291? So again, the 291, that's the 77, 77 plus the 63, uh, you know, plus 106 plus the 45. So that's the total number of students, uh, sorry, not students, but customers, they have been loyal to, from 10 to 14 years, right? Does this make sense to everyone? Well, I hope so. Um, yeah, so that's, so this is the 77, uh, you know, plus the 63, you know, plus the 106, plus the 45. Over the size of the sample, we are interested in a random customer. So the total number of customers here, of course, as I said, it's 2008. All right, so that'll be 291 over the 2008. Okay. All right. Uh, please feel free, guys, to, to ask questions if you have any. Um, yeah. So, and then you just you have just to divide, of course, 291 by the 2008. That will be the probability of the event A. Uh, I don't have time actually to give you the the answers. I mean, I'm gonna try to just. Uh, uh, answer uh, uh, the next uh, problems, I guess. Yeah, all right, so for, for two, uh, so we are looking for the probability that a customer uh, has been loyal 
uh, to the supermarket from 10 to 14 years. And now uh, we suppose that the customer is actually uh, is from the East, given that the customer is from the East. So we know that the customer is from the East. So we only interested in the customers from the East, right? Uh, so the, 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 the sample here is given by customers from the East. Okay, and among this, the customers from the East, uh, we are looking for probability that the customer has been loyal to the, the supermarket from 10 to 14, 14 years. So this, the sample here, uh, because given that he, the customer is from the East, so the sample, so given that the customer, the customer is from the East, So this means that the, our sample is given by customers from the East. From the East. All right, so what will be the size of the sample in this case? 77. Um, no, 77. 452. Yeah, 452. That's the number, 452, that's the number of customers uh, from the East, the total number of customers from the East. But as you said, uh, so out of the 452 uh, from the East, we have 77 customers, they have been loyal. So the 77 uh, customers, they have been loyal from 10 to, uh, for, from 10 to 14 years. Uh, of course, out of the all the customers from the east. So from the east, this is like the first uh, this first row here. We have a total number of four hundred and fifty two customers from the from the east, right? And out of the four hundred fifty two seventy seven, as you said, uh, that have been loyal ten to fourteen years. So yeah, so the probability here. Uh, the probability here would be equal to, so the uh, 77 over 452. So 452, again, that's the, the customers from the East, the total number of customers from the East. And this is the customers uh, loyal 10 to, from 10 to 14 years. of course, which are from the East, right? Um, number three. Um, has been loyal at least 10 years. So uh, when I say at least, uh, at least 10 years, it means, you know, uh, it could be from 10 to 14 or more than 15, right? So here at least, uh, where is it? Yeah, here at least uh, 10 years. So this is number three. Uh, means uh, from 10 to 14 years or more than 15 years or than 15, more than 15 years. Okay. So this is or, right? So this is like, we have two events. So this is like the event A, a customer has been loyal from 10 to uh, 14 years. And this is like event B, where the customer ha has been loyal more than 15 years, right? So, so then the probability of A or B in this case, will be probability of A, the loyal customer has been loyal for, from 10 to 14, plus the probability that the customer has been loyal from uh, more than 15. I mean, because of, we have or, this is supposed to be minus A, probability of A and B. Okay, but here a customer cannot he, he cannot be both, right? 
loyal from 10 to 14 years uh, uh, and more than 15 years. So he's the customer is either has been loyal either from 10 to 14 years or uh, more than 15. He cannot be both, right? So this probability of A and B, this is just uh, here, this is just zero, okay? Because a uh, customer cannot be uh, both, right? Okay, now for probability of A, uh, a, this is a probability that a uh, customer has been loyal uh, 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 from 10 to 14 years. So the frequency of the event. So how many customers they have been loyal um, from 10 to 14? This is like in the first question, I think. So the total number is 291. Oops. So this is 291 over the, here we are in, in our customer is just a random cu customer, right? So we have a, a total number of 2008 customers plus uh, B. Uh, so the total number of customers, they have been loyal to the supermarket for more than 15 years. So for more than 15 years, uh, so we have like uh, uh, 118 from the East, uh, 173 from the Midwest, you know, 150, uh, uh, 158 from the South and 86 from the West. So in total, I think there are uh, 535 customers. Uh, uh, they have been loyal to the supermarket for, uh, for more than uh, 15 years, right? That's like 118 plus the 173 uh, plus, uh, you know, the 158 plus 186. So there'll be 535, right? Um, so we have 535 customers. They have been loyal for more than 15 years. So this is plus 535 over this 2008. So they'll be equal, of course, minus zero. As I said, the customer cannot be both you know, uh, loyal from 10 to 14 uh, and loyal for more than 15. So he's either uh, loyal from 10 to 14 or more than 15, right? Cannot be both. So this is equal to uh, 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 eight, I think, uh, 26 over 2008. All right, guys, I guess, <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm gonna continue this exercise on on Wednesday. Uh, we don't have time actually to finish this uh, anyway today. So yeah, I'm I'm gonna stop here, guys. Uh, we'll continue with this on Wednesday, and as I said, I'll give you your grades, uh, your test grades on Wednesday. All uh, right, and uh, yeah, thank you for listening, guys. Uh, Wait, good night, professor, everyone. I'm sorry. Yes. When did you yeah. have quit uh, two thousand eight? Like. It's why the 2008? Oh, the 2000, okay. This is for the, the year? No, 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 no. The 2008, this is the total number of customers. So if you if you do the total here, if you if you take the sum of all the numbers here in the table, you know, you take the sum of all these numbers in the table, okay. all these numbers, the, number. okay. the total, yeah, the total right. will be the 2008. That's the total number of uh yeah the the customers okay. mm -hmm. yeah. all right thank you guys thank you rafaela thank you for listening and uh, see you on wednesday take care everyone okay. good night good night rafaela thanks <clears throat>